Now, question number 17 is indeed a frequently seen type of question. We need to find the probability that a randomly chosen positive divisor, which is nothing but in simple terms, a factor of 10 power 2023 is an integer multiple of 10 power 2001. So first of all, let us calculate how many factors does 10 power 2023 have? So 10 power 2023 can be prime factorized as 2 power 2023 into 5 power 2023. Hence, total number of factors is equal to 2024 into 2024. That is 2024 square. Now, I want to know out of these factors, how many are integer multiples of 10,000, 10 power 2001. Now, 10 power 2023 can be written as 10 power 22 into 10 power 2001. So whatever factors I take for 10, uh, 10 power 22 here will definitely be an integer multiple of 10 power 2001. So number of factors for 10 power 22 is equal to, now 10 power 22 can be written as 2 power 22 into 5 power 22. Hence, the number of factors will become 23 square. So, the probability that is being asked will be 23 square by 2024 whole square. So, hence, the total number of factors for 10 power 2023 is 2024 square, out of which the number of factors which are integer multiples of 10 power 2001 is 23 square. Hence, the required probability is 23 square by 2024 whole square. Answer option D. Now, let's see how we answer this question. It is given that A plus B by B plus C is equal to C plus D by D minus A, which of the following statements is always true. Now, Usually, in such cases, we either go by the method of substitution or we simplify the expression. Now, suppose if I simplify the expression here, I will use the rule of componendo and dividendo. Now, what is componendo and dividendo? It says if P by Q is equal to R by S, then P plus Q by P minus Q must be equal to R plus S by R minus S. This is the rule of componendo and dividendo. By applying this, I get A plus B plus B plus C divided by A plus B minus B plus C is equal to C plus D minus plus D plus A whole divided by C plus D minus D plus A. Upon simplifying, I get A plus 2B plus C whole divided by A minus C is equal to C plus 2D plus A whole divided by C minus A. Now, C minus A can be written as minus of A minus C. So if I cancel out, then we get A plus 2B plus C is equal to minus of C plus 2D plus A. So rearranging them, we get 2A plus 2B plus 2C plus 2D is equal to 0. From where I can derive A plus B plus C plus D is equal to 0. Hence, answer option B. 
Now let's look at this 19th question. A very interesting one seems to be, you know, involving a lot of possibilities and also gets difficult to identify the right path in order to count all those possibilities easily. But let me show you the top process that we need to have to be able to answer these questions in a specific order. A rabbit is sitting at the base of the staircase, which has 10 steps. It proceeds to the top by climbing either one step at a time or two steps at a time. The number of ways it can reach the top is. Now, suppose if I am the rabbit, I want to climb 10 steps. And every time I move, I can make it as a single step or a double step. So let me try to understand how many single and double steps are required for me to go to the top. How many single steps? and how many double steps and the number of ways that I can do that. Now, suppose if I want to move only in single steps, so all 10 steps I take at the rate of one step at a time. So I can do that only in one way. Now, suppose I want to take one double step which means I'm covering two steps here. The remaining eight, I would like to take single steps, which means totally I am moving nine times out of which one time it's a double step, eight times it's a single step. So this double step that I am making once, it can be made at the beginning or somewhere in between or at the end. So out of these nine times I am moving, the double step can be anywhere. So the number of ways in which I can make a double step in nine times is nine C one ways, which is equal to nine. Now suppose I make a double step twice, then the remaining six steps, suppose I am moving single steps. So which means, I am moving a total of six plus two, eight times. Out of these eight movements, two times it's double step and six times it is single step. But which two steps should be the double ones? It can be any of these eight movements. So number of ways of selecting two movements from eight is eight C2, which is equal to um, 8 into 7 by 2, 28. Now, suppose if I am making three movements as double steps, so 3 into 2, 6, the remaining four steps are single movements. So, totally, I am moving seven times, out of which three times it is double steps and four times it is single step. The number of ways in which I can make three double movements out of seven is seven C three, which is equal to now seven into six into five by three into four into uh, three into two into one, which is equal to 35. If I make four movements as double steps, four into two, eight steps are covered. The remaining two will be single steps. So I make a total of two plus four, six movements, out of which I want four movements to be double. Now, which four? It can be any four. So six C4, which is same as six C2, because NCR is equal to NCR minus R. Now six C2 uh, is nothing but 15. And lastly, if I make five double steps, now, 5 into 2, 10, which means I can't make any single movements. So if I am making five movements, all of them double steps, it can be done only in one way. Hence, the total number of ways in which I can reach the top is 1 plus 9 plus 28 plus 35 plus 15 plus 1. 
Now 35 plus 15 is 50. 1 plus 9 is 10. So 50 plus 10, 60. 60 plus 28, 88 plus 1, 89. Answer option A. Question number 20. Now this format of question is something that is very frequently seen in various entrance exams. We are given the constant value of cos alpha plus cos beta. And we are to find the maximum value of sine alpha minus sine beta. Now, let me say that cos alpha plus cos beta is given as 1. And I will assume sine alpha minus sine beta to be equal to some k. Now, if I square and add these two, then it is nothing but cos alpha plus cos beta whole square plus sine alpha minus sine beta whole square, which will give us cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus 2 cos alpha cos beta plus sine square alpha plus sine square beta minus 2 sine alpha sine beta. If you observe carefully, now cos square alpha plus sine square alpha is 1. Similarly, cos square beta plus sine square beta is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So 2 plus, if I take 2 common in these two terms, 2 cos alpha cos beta and minus 2 sin alpha sin beta, then the value in the brackets will become cos alpha cos beta minus sin alpha sin beta, which all of us know is the expansion of cos alpha plus beta. Right Now, this is what, in fact, is equal to k square plus 1. Now, if I take 2 common, then I can write it as 2 into 1 plus uh, cos alpha plus beta. Or rather, let me not take 2 as common. So I can say k square is equal to 2 minus 1. That is 1 plus 2 into cos alpha plus beta. So k is equal to, normally I would say plus or minus. But since I want the maximum value for k, I will consider only the positive root. 1 plus 2 cos alpha plus beta. Now, if I want k to be maximum, then cos alpha plus beta must also be maximum. Now. For any value of cos x, the maximum it can take is 1. Hence, it becomes square root of 1 plus 2 into 1, which is equal to root 3. Hence, the maximum value of sin alpha minus sin beta is nothing but root 3. Answer option B.